Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Geometry Nodes in 3.0. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make this DVD bouncing effect. So, first of all, big disclaimer, this is inspired by CG Matters' version of this effect. He's used uh, collision math using Raycast's nodes, so if there was a collision object in the middle of this, it would bounce off that correctly. Uh, this one uses a lot simpler math, so it will only work on a square or rectangle bounding box, as you can see here. So, without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's clear the scene except for our DVD logo. I imported this one from the internet, so this could be any DVD logo you want. So let's add in a plane for our geometry node object, and let's add in a geometry node. What we are going to start out with is a curve primitive line, so that we can make the trail effect later on. And let's use a resample curve node, so that we could get more points along that curve for the eventual trail. Next, what we are going to do is add in the bouncing effect. So for that, let's use a set position node and put that right here. Next, what we are going to do is add in the scene time by using a value node. For the time, let's put in hashtag frame. As we can see here, this will update along with the frame count. If you're using 3.1, this will be in there natively, just a little time node. But here we have to do it by uh, putting in that driver. Okay. So to set the speed of the effect, we put in a divide node, and for this I'm going to do 24 so that it'll update, uh, it'll go to 1 every 24 frames. And with that, let's add in the node that adds in the bouncing effect, which is the ping pong node. There we go. Ping pong node right there, set that to 1. If we hook this up to the offset just right off the bat, we could see that this bounces. If we did not have that, we would see that this just goes on forever. Well, if we put that in there, as soon as it hits the value of 1, which we have set right here, it'll bounce back to 0, and it'll keep doing that forever, which is the basis for the entire effect. But we want this to work on the x and y axes. So to do that, let's use a combine x, y, z node, have this one on the x axis, and plug that into there. There we go. And what we want next is to have one for the y axis, and hook that up into there. And boom, we got one that is bouncing left and right, left and right, left and right, which is exactly what we want. There we go, and let's just move that right over here. Okay, so with this, we could set the ping pong to be something else, and as we could see, it is bouncing inside the square. It is bouncing inside the square, just like, you know, the DVD logo. But we can offset the time of this using divide nodes. Let's put in divide nodes right there. Put that there and there. I find that this is easier to affect how often it bounces and such, rather than using the ping pong, because that also offsets how far it goes. This will just offset the time, while this one will offset how far it travels. So let's put that right there. And next, what we are going to do is add in the trail effect. Make it uh, so that the bottom of the trail is delayed behind the top. So to do that, let's add in a curve parameter node. Parameter, let's put that in here, and add it to our time. So let's put in a math node add, put that right over there. There we go, put that right there, and use a multiply node so that we can tell the factor how much to affect the speed, or the time. As we could see, if we go in here, this is bouncing correctly. Let's up the samples just so that we get fewer artifacts. So now if we were to offset the divide right here, we could get different patterns. And if we were to do this quite a bit, we could see that we could get many, many patterns. So just pick one that you would like. Um, I think that one's pretty good. And another thing to know, if you want this to hit the corners, uh, if you put this like a divisible of 2, it will hit the corners every once in a while. Like if this is 0.9, it'll hit it much less often. And actually, I think that's um, either that or one like this. Yeah, there we go. Ah, point 0.9 should be good. It's a good pattern that we could start off with. So let's set this one back to uh, 100. And next, what we are going to do is add in the DVD logo to this effect, which is our goal. So let's put this right over there and input an instance on points node. There we go, let's put that right there, and drag and drop our DVD logo into our scene right here, and hook this up to there. And as we can see, the DVD logo is moving, but it is way too big. 
We could either scale this down to uh, match the effect, or what we can do is add in a vector math node. Let's put all this in a frame just for organizational purposes. We could use a vector math node to set the scale. So I'll set this to 0 0.5 or 5 and 5, and it's still a bit too big. But with this method, let, let's set the scale down to something a little more manageable. Or maybe just shrink the trail because I think, yeah, there we go. Okay, there we go. We can make it so that the uh, it is stretched on the x-axis so that it makes a rectangle frame, as we can see here. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But we want this to shrink over time. So to do that, let's set that to 0.1 and input our curve parameter into the scale. Let's just bring that over there. If we hook that up into the scale, we could see it shrinks over time, exactly what we want. And yeah, that is basically the entire effect for bouncing it all. Oh wait, one more thing. If we want, let's see. If we want, we could use a vector math node to offset the rotation as well. I'm not gonna keep this effect in here, just showing you how to do it. So if we were to do that and put that into here, offset this, we can see that this is spinning over time. Again, I'm not going to keep this in the effect, just to show you how it is done. Let's see, and what else? Oh, one more thing. If you want this to uh, change a value every time it hits a side of the frame, to do that, we use a uh, combine x, y, z you node, know, just like this right here. Plug in the divides right over to here. Let's see, put those in here, and use a white noise texture, white noise. Just adding in all the features that you can with this. And if we were to put that or add that to the offset right here, put that right into there. There we go. Set this to multiply, put that into there, all that good stuff. Have this on the z-axis. Let's see. Oh, wait, we need a snap node. My apologies. We put in a vector math snap node just so that it rounds to the nearest amount. There we go. And set it to 0.1. So every time it hits a corner, it'll have a different Y value, which we could use for shading later on. And speaking of that, let's add in the shading. So since we cannot import uh, colors directly into the uh, instances at the moment, we have to use a workaround by using the Z axis right here. So if we go into our DVD logo right here and click new, and go over to here. If we use the object info node right here, we could see that we can get the position of each of these instances. And if we were to separate the uh, z value from this, we will see, separate x, y, z, put that right there. We could see that this gets darker over time. And with that, as usual, we could use a color ramp node, add in a few different colors, like this one will be red, the bottom one will be blue. Let's set that to a hue saturation value node. As we could see, boom, we now get different colors over time because the height is being offset with the time. And if, I'm not sure if I showed you this, but that's because we have the Z offset right here. Since we did not reset the position, it still has the Z offset over time. So this can be as tall as you want or as short as you want. Just having it at one will give us a gradient from zero to one in the shader editor by using that. And yeah, that is basically the entire effect. Let's see, is there anything else I need to cover? No, I think that is it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, check out my Twitter account, my Gumroad account, my new Instagram account. A Patreon may be coming in the future once I figure it out. And yeah, I will see you in the next tutorial.